My, my journey with uh, prosthetics, I guess, started purely by accident. Um, my accident was in 2006 when my arm was trapped, crushed and almost severed. Uh, I spent six months having surgery, constant infections and, and pain, and then realised that my arm wasn't actually going to heal, even though I faced 10 years worth of further surgery. There was no guarantee of any sort of success. I looked at my options and uh, I looked on the internet. I saw that bionic hands were available. So I chose amputation and I went on the NHS treatment list. Within 12 months of my accident, uh, the strong, fit, active guy that I knew had all but disappeared. Uh, the fellow I saw in the mirror was gradually turning into a physical and mental wreck. Uh, two years after my accident, more surgery, more infection, and physically life was a challenge. Psychologically, I was in a really dark place, uh, a place where just getting through the day was a fight, and I was getting tired of fighting. And then about three years after my accident, my life changed again. Bang, heart attack, game over. Or so I thought. Mr. Denson, my cardiologist at uh, Patworth, had other ideas and slapped six of his brand new stents in, so I'm still kicking. What I did notice during my five, first five years as an amputee was how people's attitudes towards me changed. Very rarely would strangers approach me in the street. They'd normally avoid me. They wouldn't make eye contact or start a conversation. I'd walk by, people would stop and stare. Sometimes with pity, sometimes they'd snigger. I've heard all of Captain Hook, Cripple, Spez, Abu Hamza, the lot. Humanity, I love it. This is, I must say, this is when I was at probably the lowest point in my life. So not a very nice thing to be dealing with. Then in 2012, I got a call out of the blue from uh, RSL Steeper in Leeds asking if I'd be prepared to trial their latest prosthetic. And a short while later, I became, I think, the first guy in the world to trial the B-Bionic 3. The effect this has had on my life has been extraordinary. People still stop and stare, but they don't look at me with pity. They laugh with me, they don't laugh at me. We'll stop, we chat, we shake hands. The best thing is, I've got my smile back. I met a lady just recently, she's got one of the most beautiful, genuine smiles you could ever hope to see. And what makes her so happy? She can stand up and she can walk. 22 years ago, she had an accident and was paralysed. She was told she'd never stand and walk again. But she's a pretty determined lady. She's got a lot of support, and with technical help in the form of an exosuit, she walks. Her name is Amanda Boxtel. If any of you can watch her videos online and not get a lump in your throat or a tear in your eye, you're more heartless and less human than any cyborg I've ever met. So while we discuss the potential implications of future technology and the moral aspects, I'd ask you just to think about this. Is it morally right or acceptable in today's world to condemn someone to a life in a wheelchair when high-tech legs or an exosuit could help them to stand on their own two feet? Is it morally acceptable in the world that we have today to give someone a hook and make them ridiculed when they might be able to control one of these? Look around you. Everyone you know, everyone you see, everyone you love is a potential amputee. That's not a rap, it's a fact. Think about Miles O'Brien. Some of you people, some of you reporters, news people, media people will have heard of Miles O'Brien. Reporter for God knows how many years, science writer, etc., etc. Stupid little accident a little while ago. He's now got no arm, gone above the elbow. That's all it takes. Like I say, when you think of the future, think of us now. If you want to sort the morals out, sort it out now. If we change lives now for the morally right reasons, I believe we can change attitudes now. And if we change attitudes now, I think the future is going to be a pretty cool place to live for some of you. And that's it. <laughs>